You're watching another day of Play For All, and it is my great pleasure to be joined today by Ed Boon, who doesn't need any introductions, but if you know or love Mortal Kombat, I'm sure you know exactly who Ed is. Hey, Ed, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you for joining us and uh, dedicating some of your time to talk to us about MK, MK Aftermath, which came out recently, and, and your kind of career uh, with the game. First of all, I think it's uh, polite to ask, how are you doing right now, given the events of the world and the uh, isolation? How's things in Ed's world? I think my world is probably similar to most of the people at uh, NetherRealm, you know, working from home, doing a lot of uh, meetings, you know, communicating through all of the, 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 the tools that are available, the, the Zooms and the Slacks and the Microsoft Teams and all the, the different uh, means of communicating. Still to some extent adjusting, even though it's been like three months, to uh, this new normal that we have. What's it been like to have to launch something like Aftermath in the midst of this? Uh, I imagine a lot of the kind of camaraderie and energy that a studio needs to get to the finish line and then enjoy the fact that you've put something out is not as easy to come by. So what's it been like for you and as a team, like what's the temperature been like having launched this? It was, it was different. We were in a situation where we were pretty much done with the main content that was consisted in Aftermath, you know, the story mode, the three additional characters, and we were in, you know, QA testing and, you know, looking for bugs, pretty much wrapping things up in a sense when everything hits. So it's not like we had to do a lot of motion capture or, or you know, content creation uh, part of the game. Even still, I was surprised how, how the team rallied together so well uh, in this circumstance. And, you know, again, our IT department was like, you know, miracle workers, how they got us all working from home so quickly. What's the response been like to Aftermath? Obviously, it's something unique for the studio. You guys have traditionally kind of put out new characters and content around that. This is the first time you've really put out a meaty story expansion. What's the reaction to that been like? And what do you think you've learned from doing that? It's been great. You know, we really kind of went all in and said, let's, you know, let's just really end the story with a bang and do something that's unexpected, which like you said, we, we've never done something like that before. We always try to do something new and unexpected with every iteration of Mortal Kombat, just to really keep thing, people on their toes. So without spoiling too much about the game, um, you mentioned the end the story. Is that how you're kind of like thinking of the, the story in this game and Aftermath? Do you see it as a definitive end? Because obviously for fans, they've been tracking since the reboot, as we call it, like, you know, the kind of progression and it feels cohesive, but there's almost like a definitive full stop at the end of this. Is that how you guys want to treat it? Yes. The story that we've told, you know, which I guess you can summarize as, as Liu Kang's journey in a sense, in my head is, 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 is done, you know, and uh, we're not going to be expanding, you know, like, Oh, and then this happened and then we reset again. And you know, like, like it's, it's, uh, we really feel like, like that's the end of that timeline. Obviously the franchise as a whole has had its own twists and turns. And that's something that the modern narrative of Mortal Kombat very much takes into account. But as basically the father, one of the fathers of Mortal Kombat and Liu Kang in a lot of ways, was it emotional seeing him reach the point where he's like a God now? And yeah. for me personally, like, like, like you said, you know, you know, Mortal Kombat, you know, the the idea of it was, you know, myself and John Tobias, we were like, okay, let's do this game that that does this. I don't think we would have guessed in a million years that, you know, 28 years later, the game would be as strong as it's ever been uh, and still going. The story element was such a minor part, you know, the, the description of Liu Kang and who he was was just literally a paragraph, a short paragraph. That was the extent of it. Over the years, we just kept layering on it and expanding on it. And then it became like this universe, this, this long running soap opera. There's no way we could have predicted that. Every once in a while, I'll go, yeah, that's right. That, that's something we started, you know. You know, it was just Liu Kang was just a guy with black pants and no shirt on. That was that was who he was. You know, there was no no other detail. There's an entire team of people now who it belongs to them as much as it belongs to you. It's kind of like you know, you have to give yeah. way. Has that been difficult for you? 
it, not not from the standpoint of the studio so much of what mortal kombat is right now you know as it's evolved over the years has been uh defined by so many significant players in the studio and um so i certainly don't feel like you know oh i need to look at every single component but when it comes to outside of the studio you know that's where I personally get a little bit more uh, protective. We, we worked really well with the people who did the Mortal Kombat direct-to-video animated feature, and they really respected it, and that was, that was a great experience. Um, but we are very, um, very protective of our child when it, when it leaves the studio. MK11 story and Aftermath especially, um, it really doubles down on the time travel function. And, you know, the, the past few games have had a lot of that, but this one specifically feels very dense in time travel. And because of that, it's a lot of engaging nostalgia, like for players, right? Seeing old versions of old characters. Yeah. As someone who was along for the ride in creating that, how was it to see like the era where you were really hands-on meeting the era where another group of people are hands-on? What was it like to experience this, my Liu Kang talking to yeah. the, a new team's, new generation's Liu Kang? That was absolutely by design. A big part of when we make a Mortal Kombat game is we know that there's a significant part of our audience who's been with us the whole time and they have the warm and fuzzies for this version of Liu Kang, or they have the warm and fuzzies for the, you know, MK2 version of, you know, Barack or something like that. So we purposefully put as many nods to previous versions of Mortal Kombat characters or back, you know, a lot of times we'll bring back up an arena and show it off with the latest technology, you know, the Deadpool or something like that. Mm. And that's absolutely by design, as was the story. You know, what would it be like to see young Johnny Cage interacting with older Johnny Cage? You know, that's absolutely by design. Mm. I think it really hit me hardest when it was like Sindel, Shao Kahn, Shang Tsung, kind of like going in to face Chronica and like two revenants. And I was like, yeah. this is basically Mortal Kombat 1 to 3 versus yeah. Mortal Kombat 4 yeah. to 11, yeah. which was like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, that's not an accident. You know, we, we kind of, there's like a fan service type of component that we always want to, you know, serve up. I know this is a question that you get asked frequently, but I feel like it's pertinent given the way Aftermath ends. Um, do you guys still have interest in exploring Mortal Kombat outside of the fighting game genre? I mean, I know a lot of fans always bring up Shaolin Monks, but not without spoiling it again, the ending of Aftermath is basically the setup for Shaolin Monks again, <laughs> kind of like another adventure between two Shaolin. Yeah. Um, is that something that you want to do? Are we going to get a Mortal Kombat rhythm game, whatever it may be? <laughs> to the exact words of your question, when you say, do you think about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're thinking about it all the time. We, we've had, you know, like you said, we've had a couple of like, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks was a really um, good example of it. The process of making it happen has been a, a little bit more challenging. You know, we've, we're, we're really just one studio and we did a game called Injustice and that did well. And then we did a sequel that did even better. And so unfortunately we can't do you know all the things that we want to do at the same time and so there there are a lot of logistics that have to be worked out a lot of you know details there's timing there's you know there's a million things that are involved uh, on top of do we want to do it one thing i want to get your uh, kind of take on is like the i know people are always asking you about the you know the celebrity or the uh, guest characters and how cool they are but I, I put it to Dominic in this way and I want to put it the same what's it like to be creating a game which is effectively a child's kind of play session come to life because I remember fond, you know fond memories of having a, a Robocop figure and a Predator figure and just smashing them together and being like, fight, fight, fight. And now you guys are basically making that as a game. Um, is that yeah. something that you've kind of like intentionally done or is it just kind of falling yeah. into we're, that way? We're, we're, we're scratching that same itch for us that you were when you were a kid, you know, taking a Robocop figure and, an, and a Terminator figure. Yeah. You no, know, we did it with Predator, Alien, you know, uh, Jason, Robocop, Terminator. It is literally that. It is literally, we are a bunch of people who grew up watching 80s and 90s 
2000s action movies and thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be cool to see RoboCop fighting Terminator? You know, like it's, it's, it's no more complex than that. One of the other things that I want to talk about is um, bringing back characters that, you know, are maybe lesser known or, or haven't been explored properly. Like Fujin's uh, a, a big one for this one and Shiva as well. What was the thinking behind that? And are there any specific characters that you wanted to bring back that you weren't able to, but uh, hope that people will still love and, and, and look into enjoying a bit more? There are, there always are, you know, if you count, there's probably about 80, there's probably more now, Mortal Kombat characters that we've released in various versions. Some are staples to Mortal Kombat, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, Liu Kang. Some are um, not as frequently seen, Fujin, Striker, Shiva. Um, and not that they, not that we don't love them as much, but, um, we always have to have Scorpion and Sub-Zero in a Mortal Kombat game. And uh, because of that, it's almost like a, like a revolving door. You know, everybody's, uh, everybody gets their chance in the sun and then maybe we give somebody a break and then when they come back, players are that much more happier to see them. Are you excited about where the technology for next gen is going? I know you guys work uh, closely with Unreal Engine and modified engines around that. Um, based on what you've seen so far and the whole uh, load time thing, what do you yeah. think that means for stories the way you tell them? Because obviously you guys are great at framing stories and seamlessly moving between combat and and uh, like cinematic moments. But what do you think, uh, what excites you about next gen? I think everybody's excited about you know, the expected jump in, you know, fidelity of the graphics, you know, the, the you know, frame rates and lighting effects and all that stuff, that's that's to be expected. Um, and I, I, I've said this, you know, multiple times before is the, I'm actually arguably more excited about the, the, the fast load times than I am about the graphics. You know, there's a, when you've made enough games, you've kind of, developed a understanding of the limitations that you have to do with every feature. You know, there's a finite amount of memory, finite amount of time that it takes to load into that memory and you, you, you work around those restrictions, you know, and try to mask that load as elegantly as possible. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, a lot of that burden has been lifted. And so you, 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 you need to clear your head and go, oh, there's a whole new world of things that we can do that I suspect even now some developers haven't thought of that, you know, a new idea will come to mind maybe in the second generation or wave of games that comes out for these systems. And that is going to be, I, I think, potentially, you know, the biggest thing that will change in terms of games design for these next generation consoles. Sure. Um, should be interested to see what that does for fatalities, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> That's true. Final question. I always like to find out what people who make games are enjoying themselves. So what are you currently watching, listening to, reading, playing that you're really enjoying and what are you excited to, to check out in the future? I haven't been playing nearly the amount of games that I want to play. I have a, a, a number of games that are on the kind of list hmm. to, to, to play. Um, I'm oddly, you know, because of the situation we're in with everybody at home and everybody, you know, I, I've been spending a, a an odd amount of time watching like um, videos on how to, like YouTube videos, instructional videos on how to do a number of things that I've been wanting to uh, learn over the years, whether it's a software program or, or you know, mm -hmm. playing the guitar or music theory or some things like that, I've been, really focused on on absorbing a lot of that stuff and trying to keep up with all the games you know as far as what what's the big thing you know what's mm. the big game that uh is getting all all the uh the attention right now all right is there anything coming up that you're excited about game wise that you want to see more of well it's it's obviously always great to see the the single player it, it, you know story narrative driven games those are always mm. 
you know, that, that's a category I hope doesn't go away. Ed, thank you so much for your time. It's been really enjoyable chatting to you and getting your kind of insight on where Mortal Kombat is and is going. So really appreciate your time. Um, for more Play For All videos, please check out GameSpot.com and YouTube.com forward slash GameSpot. And we'll see you for the next one. Bye.